Man, I know Strand just came out and it's super fun. Like one of the most fun things ever added to Destiny. But throughout all of the Legendary Lightfall campaign, I almost didn't want to touch it. That's because this new build I've been using with the Young Ahamkara Spine build on Solar Hunter is just incredible. It feels borderline broken and it is so much fun to use. If you build it the way I show you today, you're going to be able to use it in any of the hardest PvE content this season and beyond with a lot of success. I used it during the entire Lightfall campaign and have a lot of great clips showcasing exactly how good it is, but I don't want to spoil any of the later parts of the campaign for you in case you haven't played it yet. So I'm going to save those clips for the very end and give you a big warning beforehand so you have time to stop the video if you're worried about spoilers. This build is all about throwing as many of those beautiful beefed up tripmine grenades as possible. You might not normally think about tripmine grenades for PvE content. They certainly feel like more of a PvP grenade at the surface and they perform great over in the Crucible for many months. I've made multiple videos over the years showcasing just how crazy good these gloves are and Solar 3.0 a few seasons ago made them even better. Compared to a normal tripmine, these gloves make them last longer, they deal increased damage, they're harder to explode for enemies, and the explosion range is way more generous where it deals the full damage no matter how far an enemy is from the physical tripmine grenade. Plus, they still stick to enemies like unicorns which makes them incredibly fun and very powerful. The buffed up performance of the tripmines themselves is awesome and almost worth using just by itself, but where things get really crazy is how these gloves give you the tripmines back so insanely fast. First of all, just by dealing solar ability damage, you get a chunk of grenade energy returned. So if you stick an enemy, you're going to get one chunk from the stick and another from the explosion. Then if you're using your throwing knives along with the trip mines, every knife hit is going to give you a bit of trip mine energy back as well. Trip mines also scorch enemies, which we'll get into in a minute. Let's talk about aspects and fragments to show you how crazy all this synergizes now in Lightfall, especially with access to two brand new fragments that are total game changers. For your aspects, we want to pick the ones that give us the most total fragment slots. This will give us a total of 5 fragments that we can equip. So you're going to pick On Your Mark and knock them down. On Your Mark gives you some really nice weapon handling and reload speed bonuses, but for this particular build, the biggest benefit are those 3 fragment slots that it comes with. Knock them down buffs up your super of choice. I typically have gone with Blade Barrage here because it's the most widely useful for PvE for both ad clear and for single target damage. But what's really cool about Knock Em Down is that it also fully refunds your knife energy every time you're radiant and you land a knife kill, which is going to happen automatically thanks to our fragment choices. Speaking of knives, there are two main contenders with this build. I originally started using the Explosive Knife, which has always been my go-to pick in PvP because it synergizes so nicely with the Wombo combo. This definitely works great in PvE as well, and it's a solid choice. But after some testing, I've started leaning a little bit more towards the knife trick instead. This is mostly because of how it interacts with the new fire sprite system added in Lightfall. When you land hits with the knives, they will scorch enemies. Then once you kill a scorched enemy, you're going to make a fire sprite which then gives you grenade energy back directly. This brings us to the topic of fragments, where this build really starts to come together. Ember of Torches makes us and our allies radiant every time we land a hit with our knives. Together with the knock em down fragment, this is how we're going to automatically keep getting our knives back so fast every time we get a knife kill. Even if we don't get the kill directly with our knives, we'll still get some melee energy back from Ember of Searing. Plus, when we defeat that Scorched enemy, we're going to create a Fire Sprite. With Ember of Ashes, we're applying more Scorch stacks to our target, and once you apply enough Scorch, they're going to ignite. We'll touch on this a little bit more when we cover the weapon choices in a minute. Ember of Mercy is one of the new ones in Lightfall. Anytime you revive an ally, both you and your buddy get Restoration. Restoration is that buff that constantly heals you for a brief moment in time. This thing is so clutch, it literally saved us from a wipe so many times during the final boss fight in the campaign. But it gets even better, way better. It also gives us restoration anytime we pick up a fire sprite. And remember, we're going to be creating these things constantly by scorching our enemies and then killing them. Lastly, Emperor of Resolve heals us every time we get a grenade kill. And guess what? We're going to be getting a lot of grenade kills with this build. Anytime you're in danger, just throw a nade out there and get some healing. Easy peasy. For the other character options, I've been using the Gambler dodge to get knives back automatically anytime I don't get a kill just by throwing them, because all you need to do is a simple dodge near an enemy. Triple jump is a no-brainer for PvE to make the platforming a little bit easier and get some extra height. And of course, we want to use those tripmine grenades as the grenade choice, which is the whole point of running the Ahamkara's build in the first place. When it comes to weapons, there are a lot of good options, but two of these really came to the forefront after testing. Sunshot just got an enormous buff. It still has the base explosive payload and things go boom whenever you get a kill, and the explosions can chain to other enemies creating additional explosions, but now the explosion part is even better. If a nearby enemy doesn't die to the initial explosion, they're going to receive 10 Scorch stacks, or 15 if you're running Ember of Ashes. So if you kill them after they become Scorched, they're going to create a Fire Sprite. You can then pick this up to get Restoration and Grenade Energy returned. This has made Sunshot go from a pretty decent choice to an amazing choice. 
The only bummer is that we don't have any hand cannon interactions with the seasonal artifact directly this season, so in content with a whole lot of champions, you might need to make a swap. Ignitions do now affect unstoppable champions though, and I haven't been able to test this thoroughly, but it might help to get the job done. I'm not sure how reliable this will be in practice since you do need to have another enemy nearby to explode for that Scourge. Luckily though, we have an amazing option that directly counters unstoppable champions this season. I just gushed about how much I love Polaris Lance in my last video. It's amazing for ranged fights in PvP, and it was a pretty solid PvE choice too with the explosions and the burn damage if you could land your crits. But wow, it just got so much better in Lightfall. Now that perfect fifth shot can also apply Scorch which synergizes so well with this build. I used it a ton during the Lightfall campaign and it worked really really well, especially for the final boss fight which I'll show you at the end of the video. If you want to spend your exotic slot on something else like Wither Horde or Izanagi or Galarhorn, a primary weapon that has Incandescent can work really well with this build too. The Kalos Mini Tool or the Staccato 46 both come to mind depending on how close you want to be to your enemies. For the other slots, I've been mostly using a Slug Shotgun like Heritage or a Sniper for my Kinetic slot, and then a Solar Rocket Launcher for the Heavy slot, but these aren't required for the build and you can really use whatever you like here. I also do want to spend some time testing out the Prometheus lens with its new rework that now includes Incandescent. I think it could potentially work pretty well with the build. On the Seasonal Artifact, you have a few good options to make this build really sing. The Authorized mods in the second column for Solar and Grenades both take down the cost substantially for stacking some of these mods that we'll talk about in the next section. And Solar Surge gives you armor charges every time you pick up a Fire Sprite, which will be happening pretty often with this build. This also pairs really well with some of our mod choices. For my helmet, I've been using Solar Siphon to make orbs of power from Solar Kills. My friends during the campaign were really loving all these orbs that were popping out, especially from Prometheus Lens. Along with this, I've been using Heavy Ammo Finder and Heavy Ammo Scout to get more heavy for myself and my teammates. Ashes to Assets is also a great pick if you're more into playing solo content. For the gloves, Firepower creates orbs on grenade kills, and grenade kickstart mods give you a big chunk of grenade energy back every time you throw one. These go a long way into being able to constantly throw those trip mine grenades. For chest armor, you can really customize these depending on what kind of enemies you're fighting, and if you need some extra ammo reserves. Just pay attention to whatever's killing you and tweak it from there. For the boots, Solar Weapon Surge gives you an armor charge for picking up orbs, and a damage boost to solar weapons when you have an armor charge. You have a lot of choices here to interact with those orbs as well. I really like Recuperation, which gives you a boost of healing just for picking up an orb, and Innervation also helps you with grenade energy on orb pickup. Or you can also just stack an extra Solar Weapon Surge for a bit of extra damage as well. For your cloak, you're definitely going to want some bomber mods to give you grenade energy back just for dodging. Utility Kickstart can help you to dodge more often, or you can also go for Special Finisher to generate some special ammo for your teammates. I also really liked Reaper for making extra orbs for teammates after dodging and then landing a kill. For your stats, I'd go with as much resilience and recovery as you need to stay alive and then dump the rest of it into Discipline to get those grenades back even faster. I've had a blast using this build so far, and I'm going to show you some gameplay using it for the later parts of the campaign, so if you're avoiding spoilers, feel free to move on and check out another video. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas on how to improve this build even more. So we take off the shoulder pads, basically. Okay, she's our primaries on them from here on. Yeah. Okay. Watch her as Just watch out for soon. death beam. Yeah. Be ready. Yeah, something is spawning. I look, it looks just like tiny little ads. Okay, sweet. I have so much special ammo now. This is crazy. I can like literally throw almost infinite grenades in this guy. I have one HP. All right, so he's in melee mode. It seems. Yeah. Oh, Just he hit him, him with everything. Doing he big damage. Hit, he hit him with a G arm. He's immune. He's immune. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's out. immune. 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 So he's gonna, gonna make a, He's gonna make his homie now. Save your grenades oh, for the tormentor. Bro. Another shield. Nice. Nice. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Phase three. <laughs> Please no. I hope you really enjoyed this one. And up next, if you want to watch another video, check out how I use this exotic in PvP to dominate the Crucible. It's a video on the top of your screen and also linked in the description.